Hi everyone, welcome to the class. You can see a question on the screen, right? By that question itself, you can understand I will be talking about photosynthesis chapter. Okay, the very first question which you must answer is where does this photosynthesis take place in plant, right? So if I ask this question, definitely you are going to answer me that it is leaf, right? This is what we have learned, right? So you have to remember that the major structure, okay, or the major organ which is involved in the process of photosynthesis, it is leaves, okay? I can write here green leaves, right? But can it happen anywhere else also? Yes, but I will come later on that. Uh, okay, in the green leaves also, is there any particular specific part of that green leaf where photosynthesis is going to take place? Yes, that tissue is present, which is specifically made for doing photosynthesis, right? What is the name of that tissue? The name of that tissue is mesophyll tissue, right? In this mesophyll tissue, actually what is present? Very important structure is present that is called chloroplast. And actually chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis. Understood? Now, can we have any other part or any other organ also which can do photosynthesis? Yes. Okay. If I, if I consider any other organ, okay, except this major organ which is leaf, it could be, uh, I, I can write here, okay, young dicot stem. Okay, it happens in young dicot stem. Why dicot? Because in NCRT, they have mentioned that particular tissue. What is the tissue? Which tissue is present in the young dicot stem which can do photosynthesis, right? So, it is cholenchyma. Okay, cholenchymatous tissue. Which type of tissue is cholenchyma? Perm uh, simple permanent or uh, uh, you can say meristematic or is it a, a complex permanent tell me right so this cholenchymatous tissue is very important because this also has the same structure which is very much necessary for photosynthesis that is chloroplast understood so what you understood here chloroplast is actually the place where photosynthesis is going to happen right chloroplast majorly is present in the mesophyll tissue of leaf and chloroplast is also observed in the cholenchyma of young dicot stem Right? And please remember it should be dicot. We cannot write monocot because monocot does not have cholenchyma. Cholenchyma is absent in monocot. As well as we cannot write old dicot stem because then cholenchyma is replaced by the bark due to secondary growth. Right? So you have to be very careful. It should be major organ which is necessary for photosynthesis is green leaves. Okay? And other organs which can also do photosynthesis in plant, it is young dicot stem. What is the reason? Because they have this tissue which contains chloroplast in their specific cells. Okay? So, it means that chloroplast is actually very necessary for photosynthesis, right? So, we must study about chloroplast, right? So, for easiness or you can say to uh, save the time, I have added one pre-made chloroplast, okay, which I am going to label here itself so that you can understand each and everything here. Okay, in cell the root of life, you have studied the structure of chloroplast, right? So, tell me, this chloroplast is double membrane bound cell organelle or single membrane bound cell organelle? So, you can see here itself, it is having two membranes, right? So, this is outer membrane right and then this is one more membrane so this will be considered as inner membrane okay outer membrane okay it is more permeable outer membrane is more permeable what's the meaning of permeable permeable means uh, there can be movement of uh, substances or molecules across this membrane right more permeable okay it will allow more molecules to pass inner membrane is relatively less permeable as compared to outer membrane right what is the reason reason is that it is having more membrane proteins and if any particular molecule is passing with the help of a protein it will be always a very selective type of transport right uh, and you have learned this in other chapters also in cell root of life also you have studied right so there are specific protein transporters which will allow only the transport of those molecules specific molecules right that's why it is more specific and less permeable right that is the reason so two membranes you understood now inside this structure okay inside this double membrane bound structure there's a space right that space is considered as Okay, the space is called as stoma or I will write it here. This space is called as stoma. Okay, this is a matrix only. Okay, in this stoma, you will see some membranes. Okay, can you see here these membranes? These membranes are together called thylakoid membranes. But you can notice a very different type of organization in these membranes. Can you see here they are uh, present in different manner and here they are present in different manner, right? Same membrane but arrangement is not same, right? So, I am going to label here. Uh, see, this particular area, okay, this particular area is called grana 
Okay, grana is a plural term. Granum is a singular term. If I'm talking about all of these, then, then I will be using grana. If I'm talking only about single structure, it is grana. Okay, so this is plural which I'm writing here. Then you can see two grana are joined by this membrane. So this arrangement is called stroma lamellae. Okay, grana and stroma lamellae. Both together are made up of what? Thylakoid membrane. Okay, understood? So three membranes you have seen. Outer inner membrane, right? After that, all the membrane which is present inside the stroma, they are together called as thylakoid membrane. And they are very special. I will tell you why, right? They are called thylakoid membrane. And organization of thylakoid membrane is not same throughout. Some places you can see it is making a structure which is appearing like stack of coin, right? It looks like stacks, stack, or you can say pile, okay, stacks or pile of coins. Right? It's looking like one coin, the next, the next, like that. Right? And NCRT writes about this grana as in Cell Out of Life chapter, intergranal thylakoid. This is another name of grana. Okay? Intergranal thylakoids. Okay? Stroma lamella. If I talk about stroma lamella, what is the structure? They have mentioned about this. This is flattened, flattened, membranous, flattened, membranous tubules. Okay, flattened membranous tubules. What is their work? Okay, they connect to grana. Okay, now what is the work of this grana and stroma lamellae together? What they are doing inside this uh, stroma in this space, right? So you have to remember that together the work of this thylakoid membrane is what? They carry, okay, they contain, they contain photosynthetic pigments. What do they have? They have photosynthetic pigments on them, right? So they contain photosynthetic pigments. This is their work, okay? And what are the different types of photosynthetic pigments which you have learned? You have chlorophyll A, or you will be reading it, right? You will be having chlorophyll B, right? You will be having xanthophylls, that yellow color pigment, right? Then you will be having uh, carotenes, right? All these pigments are organized on this photosynthetic membrane okay so on this thylakoid membrane itself all these pigments are present right that is why it helps in light reaction okay light reaction actually happens in this area so i can write here okay thylakoid membrane is a site for light reaction okay when you will study photosynthesis you will be reading that photosynthesis is further divided into two steps big steps right first is light reaction where the photosynthetic pigments will trap the sunlight and next step is Carbon dioxide fixation step where you will see carbon dioxide will enter and utilizing the energy formed by light reaction, right? We are going to make glucose in stroma, right? So now let's talk about stroma. You understood we have grana, we have stroma lamella and we have together these two things are uh, making membrane which is called thylakoid membrane. Or you can say thylakoid membrane is arranged in this manner. Some places it is arranged like pile of coin or stacks of coin. Some places where it is just straight, flat, membranous tubule, right? Now, if I talk about this area, this is space, this homogeneous matrix which is present inside the uh, inner membrane, this is stroma is very important, right? Because what is present in the stroma? So many things are present in the stroma, right? This stroma contains all the enzymes, okay? It contains enzymes for synthesis of starch, okay? Plus, I'm writing here protein also because this line is given in NCRT. And for star synthesis, one example I will be writing, you all know which is that particular uh, enzyme which is needed for synthesis of sugar. So it is Rubisco, right? St starch as in I can write in bracket sugar, right? So Rubisco, you know in Cetra cycle, it's a very big enzyme. That enzyme is present here. Along with this, right, so many other things are also present in the stroma, right? Uh, I will be writing here one more thing. If I discuss about this, can I write that if Starch synthesis or sugar synthesis enzymes are present here. Then can I say stroma is a site for dark reaction, the next part of photosynthesis. Okay. So if somebody asks you a question, where is light reaction going to happen in the chloroplast? On the thylakoid membrane. It can be granite, it can be stroma lamellae. Right. Both places where it will happen. Right. What is the place of dark reaction? Stroma. Right. Why? Because enzymes necessary for dark reactions are present here. Now, in addition to the enzymes which are necessary for dark reaction, there are many other things which are there in the stroma. You will be seeing some small, small structures like this. Okay, you will be seeing a double-stranded circular structure like this. 
which is having hydrogen bonding in between the two strands and you will be having some small structures which help in translation process. So you understood very well this thing which I have drawn here this is our double stranded single circular DNA right what about this structure this is our ribosome okay this is ribosome and can you tell me which type of ribosome this is 60 uh, sorry 80s or 70s this is 70s type of ribosome and can you tell me what is this structure which i have drawn here this structure this structure is rna right so cell end of life you have studied that a uh, chloroplast is a semi autonomous cell organelle just like mitochondria because it has its own dna it can do protein synthesis that's why you have certain uh, enzymes also necessary for protein synthesis here it has its own uh, ribosome prokaryotic origin right rna is also there so these things are also present in the stroma right these things you have to remember okay along with that when you will study the chapter photosynthesis and you will see one diagram over there you will see that in the same space they have made some structures like this okay what are these structures these structures are nothing but they are considered as they are considered as starch granules because after the synthesis of starch some starch will be stored here right so they are present in the form of starch granules right this is the structure of chloroplast which you have to remember okay in which thylakoid membrane and stroma is very very important because the light reaction and dark reaction are going to happen here right so i hope the structure of chloroplast is clear to you okay please revise this structure in the next session we will be studying about the types of pigments which are present in this chloroplast okay thank you everyone hope you understood